Really cool story. This is Matt Salong, and he is the Chief Technology Officer of Real Life Trading. My name is Jeremy Newsom, and I'm going to be doing a stock review for you today. This is Monday, of course. I just want to make sure you know who's behind all the greatness here at Real Life Trading. This guy. And your girl, Kathy Woods, does it again. Tesla Target 3000 for 2025, which is four years from now. That went up from 1400 for 2024, and they also laid out $4,000 a share, best case bull scenario. Tesla did a $3 trillion market cap at $3,126 a share. Anyway, uh, that is out this weekend. Tesla gapped up with some of that news today. This was Mr. Squiggles from a few days ago. And I mean, in general, I'm extremely bullish on Tesla, so I get it. Is it going to go that high that quickly? Um, it's very possible. It's very possible. With the meteoric rise that it already had, I'm intrigued to see what it does from here. I am in. I'm in long. I got put sales, got shares, got calls. I'm in it. So giant triangle is going to consolidate for a few more weeks before doing anything drastically more bullish than this. And we will see over time. But uh, buy the dips, be long. I think that is absolutely my uh, my approach and my position right now with Tesla. Teladoc pulled back a little bit, but had a little bit of bullishness today, which is nice. The smallest amount of bullishness, but I do like the candles that came out. I do like the gap down. I like the fact that this was the last time Amazon kind of announced it's going to come up with its own Teladoc services, Teladoc type of services. But really, the article said it was just for its employees. Now, could it spring to something in the future? Possibly, yes, but I don't know. Um, we'll, we'll see. If, if anything, you know, Pinterest at one point, uh, Facebook came out with a, uh, a thing that was going to rival Pinterest and, you know, whatever. But long story short, you know, Pinterest eventually battled out with that as, as well. I'm in Pinterest bullish. Actually, I really like the candle that came in today, kind of off to 100, a little bit of a high wave type of candle, almost a perfect inside candle, but in general, still bullish, still hanging out. I'm actually still bullish on the markets in general, ladies and gentlemen, expecting us to just slowly grind higher from here. I like the position on the Qs. I like the gap up. This is a retest gap. I like the fact that we held the 100 simple moving average and I'm, I'm game for something like this. Wh whatever happens, I'm still, generally moderately bullish out there. So just kind of sitting back, relaxing, chilling, uh, taking it slow and just allowing March to transpire. And then as we approach into April, I'll be more bullish as we just let everything kind of just chill out, hang out and do its thing. AMD today, congrats to a few traders who played AMD uh, nice today. It was a really, really cute move, right? Bullish candle gapped up. It was a retest gap. We retested into the 200 something moving average and bounced quite nicely on AMD. So that was very cool. We actually have a swing trade on Angie's list that did look really, really nice uh, two days ago. Mm, we're up on it right now, but it's just kind of hanging out. So Angie's list, overall trend, chilling, a little bit of a sell off today on ANGI. It'll be interesting to see what that does. Here's purple innovation. So purple trying to bounce between the 100 and 200 simple moving average. 200 simple moving average is a good support. And we took out this ginormous weekly bearish uh, volume on the daily chart. So if you come over to the daily chart, we took out all of that volume. And so far we actually have an inside candle on the week. So we had an inside candle fall by an inside candle fall by another inside candle. So eventually purple, if it breaks higher, could continue higher, but that's just my thoughts. And last but not least, Palantir. Everyone's talking about Palantir. And I'm not saying it can't go higher. I am just saying that it's down right now. And if we do not get above $28 by May, uh, sorry, April 1st. I think this is going to be a dud city. I think it's going to trade sideways and do a whole lot of nothing for April. Everyone I know is talking about Palantir and how bullish it is and how much they're buying and why it's going to go higher and how much they love it, including your girl, Kathy. And I think that's not a bad thing. It just seems to me that since everyone knows it, it's probably going to do one of these things for a while, uh, maybe until May and then go a little bit higher, but I'm okay for it to consolidate uh, a bit. I will lose some money on these calls if uh, Palantir doesn't start moving up drastically and quickly, but that's just my opinion. If it doesn't get above 28 by April 1st, it's going to be a little bit of a dudville on Palantir. That's it. That's my stock review for today. I'm going to hop into the afternoon swing trading room in 18 minutes from now. And for those of you who subscribe to that, thank you so much. We do have a new round of mentorship groups available. These are amazing. The people who are not currently sold out at this exact moment in time, you got Thomas Wong, 
who has three slots left and Robert Thompson who has three slots left. So go be a part of either one of those. If you are um, more of a beginner trader, Thomas is focusing a little bit more on the beginner trader for this particular group, thus the green shading. And Robert Thompson is going to be doing a little bit more of advanced stuff. So if you're an advanced options trader or you want to be, throw yourself into that one. Either way, folks, thanks so much for watching your Monday Real Life Stock Review, and I will see you later this week. All right, you guys rock. Bye.